why Jesus will come in contact with you. The day this woman was healed was not the first day he was coming to the synagogue. She's been coming in the synagogue over and over and over again. But on a particular day, Jesus met her. Jesus came as usual to teach and to preach in the synagogue. All of a sudden, he looked and saw a woman that couldn't straighten up. Others were straightened up, but she was bent over. This morning, under God, we came to attack whatever bent you. It has to let you go so that you can straighten up. Can you be on your feet for just one minute, everybody? Lift your hand like this. Speak with confidence. I'm not supposed to be bent over. I'm supposed to straighten up. That, say it with some faith. I'm not supposed to be bent over. I'm supposed to straighten up. This morning, in Jesus' name, I will straighten up. Now, take your seat. If you are bent over, your movement will be very slow. Talk to me. Pastor Rinze, come. Evangelist Rinze, where are you? Come here. Watch somebody bent over. How they move. Come over here. Now, bend over and walk. Stop. That's how she walked for 18 years. You don't understand what I'm saying. She was bent over like this for 18 good years. Some persons are bent over like this spiritually in their lives. Some everything they do in life is bent. They don't go straight. Before they could go straight, they will suffer and struggle. And it was like this. If the Bible says it was like this for 18 days or 18 weeks, it would be fair. But how many years? The situation had lasted so much. And do you know, that situation had identified that woman. Everywhere she goes, people don't know her. They know her as the woman that is bent over. If they want to refer to her, say, I don't know how. I don't know that woman that is bent over. So her problem identified her. If there's any problem that have identified you, it shall be reversed this morning. Yeah. Whatever matter about your life that people now refer to you through that matter shall be overrun this morning. Yeah. He said, he couldn't straighten up. In fact, when I was saying to God, what do I tell your children today? The voice was so loud. Tell them they will straighten up. Yeah. That they cannot be bent over again. Yeah. Try walking again, brother. For 18 years. That's okay. You are not bent over. Stretching up. Is training. Walk as a straining up person. Walk. Do you see the movement? This morning, your movement will change. Because you will operate from being bent over to being straightened up. There are some persons, everything about their lives don't come easy. They must go through even things that are very easy are too difficult for them. <laughs> There's somebody I know from primary one. Her result always will get lost. She kept on losing results. So they will look for it and so before they get it. Until higher institution, they now lost four results after the her mates have gone to use service. They eventually found three, couldn't find one. She registered and wrote that one. And by the time she wrote that one, that one still got lost. She has an attitude, a lifestyle of losing things. But this morning, the power of God will destroy that thing. You will straighten up. I say you will straighten up. Maybe I'm speaking to only 10 of you and let me speak prophetically to them. I just came to declare under God, whatever bent you, we let you go in the name of Jesus Christ. So that you can straighten up. You can straighten up. Sit down. The Bible said Jesus saw that woman. Today, Jesus will locate you. The woman was not the only person or the only sick person in the synagogue, but the Lord took notice of her. And further, she has been in that situation for a very long time. And the Lord said, 
woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And he laid hand on her. And she straightened up. <laughs> now listen carefully. People were indignant. They were offended. They were angry. Why should Jesus heal on a Sabbath? What is the meaning of the word Sabbath? Sabbath means rest. Jesus is rest to humanity. Oh, reverend, people should worship on Saturday. After all, the Bible said that he rested on the seventh day. Anybody who worship on any other day that is not Saturday is not worshiping God. Excuse me. The same Bible said, he that regarded a day, regarded it unto the Lord. Any day you worship, Monday, is today not Wednesday? Talk to me here. Are we not worshiping God? Is, not, is God not accepting the worship we have given him on Wednesday? Since Jesus died and rose again, any day you worship God is acceptable. Why? Jesus is God's Sabbath. Sabbath simply means rest. When you receive Jesus into your life, you have received God's Sabbath into your life. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Rest is given to everyone that accepted Jesus. Rest means free from sin, free from bondage, free from affliction, free from reproach. It means rest. And may I announce to you today, you are already in your rest. Rest is not rest in peace. Rest in peace means the person has what? Has passed over. But get this understanding. Everyone that have Jesus in your life, you have rest. <laughs> you have what? Rest. Emphasis. Jesus said, on this rest day, she should rest from whatever bent her over. And I speak to 15 of you. You are going to take a rest from whatever bent you over today. You take a rest from it. Look at three persons and say to each of them, whatever bent you over, you will rest from it. Because rest has arrived. His name is Jesus. <laughs> How many of you agree with me that rest, rest is here? <laughs> His name is Jesus. He's here to make you straighten up. He's here to make you straighten up. He's here to make you straighten up. And they were so offended. And Jesus said, which of you on the Sabbath day doesn't release his ox to go take some water and get some grass? If an animal could be given freedom on the Sabbath day, humans should have better. The offense of Jesus was, this is hypocritical. You guys release your animals to get grass on Sabbath. This is Abraham's daughter bound by Satan for 18 years. Will she not be made whole on the Sabbath? Now get this. The secret behind bending over are demons. It is the will of God that you stand upright, that you straighten up. But it is the will of Satan that you bent over. But hear the word of God. The son of man came to destroy the works of the devil. Be on your feet again. Say to one person who has faith, every work of Satan in your life that meant you, that made you to bend over, Jesus came to destroy it. No, no, you are, you are guessing. Say to him, Jesus buried him up here. Can you pull straight? Here they sit down. I'm almost done. Jesus said, This is Abraham's daughter. Bound for 18 years. This morning, whatever bind you will let you go. I'm speaking to 10 of you. Whatever kept you down must let you go. Must let you go. Must let you go. For this is Abraham's daughter that have been bound for 18 years. On Apugime, go where we are nobody is weak. Say, woman, you are set free from whatever bound you. She straightened up. Now, this scripture is making me think about something. A demon spirit 
in touch somebody and bent the person over. I bind every demon spirit. Whatever demon spirit that bent your family over, their yoke is broken in your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And some of you may say, well, nothing really bent me over. After all, I'm doing well in business. My family is working. What I'm doing is going well. But I have a question for you. Spiritually, are you sure you're not bent over? Do you pray well? Do you have passion for God? Are you committed to righteousness? Are you dedicated to serving the Lord? If you are not, you are bent over spiritually. Amen? I was preaching on Advent Cable Network last night. <laughs> there was something I said that I want to repeat this morning here. Some of you look so fine, if I look at you now, very wonderful. But spiritually, you are slimmer than a, a stick of broom. You are suffering from spiritual malnourishment, spiritual kwashoko. Why? No word of God, no prayer, no fellowship, no fasting, no consecration. You are so lean in the spirit that even the tiniest wind from hell can blow you away. But I pray that the Lord will so work on your life that Satan cannot handle you. I'm speaking to about 10 of you again. May you grow so spiritually fat, grow so spiritually robust that the devil cannot handle you again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take your seat. He said, this is Abraham's daughter that was bent by a spirit. The Holy Ghost said to me, anything called sickness has some spirits attached to it. They are called spirits of infirmity. Whether it's malaria or cancer or typhoid or whatever sickness you call it, Jesus Christ refers to them as spirits of infirmity. Doctors call them ill health or sickness. What do doctors call ill health? Sickness. What does Jesus call it? Spirit of infirmity. Infirmity is spirit of infirmity. Now, but this, this particular woman, it was not just a spirit of infirmity. Demons bound her. There's a young lady, anytime somebody comes to marry her, the person will have accident or die eventually. And nobody wants to marry her again. Educated, a child of God, goes to church very seriously, committed, a Pentecostal church member, spirit filled, tongue talking, demon chasing, fire, fire. But nobody marries her. If any brother ventured to propose, in fact, one of the brothers that proposed to her came to my office and said, I was terribly slapped last night. As somebody said, I'm trying to marry her, his wife. Uh -uh. Now, marry you, Lana Bani. Now, one tall, huge man came and said, No, one at you, Munye, Monsieur de Quiam and Ojuaraju. Things can happen in this life. <laughs> He's a man of God. <laughs> that one, that one slap is enough. <laughs> I don't want the second one. I'm going to again. <laughs> I said, No, 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 no. She could be God's way for your life. Let's invite her over and deal with the matter. Something may be wrong somewhere that she may not even know. You may be going through something you don't know. And if you mistakenly enter the hand of the fake, they will teach you a lesson you will not forget. Like a young lady who was going through crisis in marriage. She went for prayer. When we were still, still, in, we were still on campus in Enugu. She went for prayer. And one of these guys, they knelt her down and brought this big candle, very fat one, Put on her hair, put fire on top of it, and used pigeon and taught her a lesson she will not forget in her entire life. On her body, it the pigeon, pigeon, it the pigeon also. She bought it too. She came back in the morning worse than she left. <laughs> Everybody living in the compound, when we saw her with all the candle and whatever, okay, you again. <laughs> she now told us her ordeal. 
Satan cannot cast out Satan. Agents of darkness cannot drive out evil spirit. Any matter Satan sets we repeat. Say that to your neighbor. Any case Satan sets must repeat. Satan has no free gift. Only God can give something free. Say it to your neighbor. Any case Satan settled shall be repeated again. The blessings of God make rich and added no sorrow. But Satan multiplies sorrows. For they that run after strange gods, their sorrows shall multiply. Oh. She was bent over by a demon. I address some of you in your marriages that are bent over. I entered a family where nine ladies were married and they were all returned. Married and wedded and returned. You don't understand. I didn't say divorced. I said returned. Married, wedded with children. One of them had four, the other one three, the other one two, some one. Married, wedded with children, returned. I didn't say divorced. I didn't say separated. I'm sure you're hearing this for the first time. <laughs> returned. How? Their husbands would just wake up one morning and say to the wife, let's go to your father's house. They would come to the father's house and the man would say, can you now stay here? I'll come and pick you in, in, in two weeks' time. She would stay there and that's all. A year, two years, three years, four years. Five. By the time I arrived there, I saw one seven years returned. The man will return her with her children and will not ask about them again and yet will not marry again. I don't know whether, whether you understand what I'm saying. The man will not marry another person. No. As I say, another woman took him. No. He will stay without a wife. And yet, he will not take his family. Bent over. Bent over. Bent over. He took prayers to break that yoke. And in less than six months, they were all returned back to their husbands. Their husband came and took them back. I decree in the name of Jesus, whatever has bent you over maritally is broken now. He's broken now. He's broken now. If there is a sickness that runs in the family line that everybody suffers, that is a bent over. That is a bent over situation. You will straighten up. I pray for 25 of you. Whatever runs in the family line that everybody is suffering, in your life, it shall not succeed. In your life, it will not flourish. In your life, it will not excel. Let me hear an amen if you are a believer in that prayer, wherever you are. Take your seat. The Bible said, Jesus rebuked that devil. And the devil left. And he straightened up. Somebody said to me, Reverend Oku, that building, my grandfather was building it and died. My dad started it, roofed it and died. Our eldest brother plastered and put all the aluminium windows. He died. It is my turn. I don't want to die, but I want to start the project. Beautiful house, but it cannot be finished. Family bent over situation. I got there. Immediately I entered that compound. I said to one of them, Ah! Come, come. Where is the first son? You. Now, now the first son now. Come, 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 come. He. Over 180 years ago, they were looking at me. <laughs> How can you possibly know what happened in our house? 180. I said, I entered here and a very hefty giant stood in front of your compound and asked me where I'm going to. That this territory belonged to him. Over 180 years ago, your great grandfather who lived in this compound buried Dimba alive for challenging him. You know, those days, if you do that, it's not, it's not bad. You are, you are an Odogu. You know, it's not a bad thing. Ah, no. It's, that's. Yeah. <laughs> Those days they used to say, now can you be here again? Those days, I didn't know what they now. It was happening then. Took the dim path, dug the ground, buried him, and covered the sand. 180 years ago. 
And I said, I said to him, and unfortunately, none of you here is born again. And you want to build on top of that blood. It's not possible. So we led them to Christ and we applied the blood that speaketh a better word than the blood of Abel, the blood of Jesus, and silenced that voice after serious repentance and denunciations of evil. This is four years. They have finished. I have dedicated the house. They are living in it now. They are living in it now. It's been four years. And the young man is not defied. He traveled abroad. He's alive, strong, and healthy. Whatever bent everybody born in your family over, he's broken now. He's broken now. He's broken now. Somebody stand on your feet and say, whatever attack from ancestral foundation affecting those born in my father's house, it will not affect me. The power of God is here. I will straighten up. Take your seat. I'm telling you situations of life. I have given you Bible story. Let me give you two more examples and I'm done. A woman brought her children. Two of them. Anytime they write Wayek, they make nine raised to power nine. Do you understand what I mean? F, 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 F into nine. That is failure with distinction. You know, there's, you know there's failure and there's failure with distinction. If you have F, 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 P, 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 C, 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 it's failure. But F, F, F throughout is what? Failure with distinction. And she said to me, my daughters, two girls, are very intelligent. Yeah. Before exams, give them mock, they will pass. Give them whatever, they will succeed. They teach others in their class. Very brainy. But right why heck, they will fail. Some things are happening. In, you know, we pastors, we hear things. Though. Now, as I was investigating, asking them some questions, the woman said to me, do you know the worst? As what I'm saying may look strange, but it's, it's happened to a family. Do you know the worst? I said, no. She said, we didn't register Wayek last year. We didn't register. But they had the result. All F. Are you surprised to hear that? She said, that's what I knew. Now, I can't go They did not register last year. But this is the result. With their full names, F. She said, it looks mysterious. But that's what happened to a family. Their daughters did not register that year. The principal called the mother to come and take her children's results. All F. The woman was talking and was weeping and you know, crying and said, Madam, stop crying. I closed my eyes. I said, Father, this is a terrible situation. What do we do? The Lord says, stop praying. She's the cause. Uh -uh. I said, Madam, clean your eyes. Sit down. <laughs> God said you are the cause. He said, me? I'm a child of God, as I know. But I said, Lord, please speak to me. What actually happened? I said, Madam, did you steal money when you were in primary school? Say me, steal money. No, no. Ah, I'm not I said, Madam, think well. I began to worship. I began to sing to the Lord. She said, Excuse me. I think I remember something. I said, Talk to me. She said, When I was a small girl, my teacher kept money. During break, I took it. And went and bought things and ate. And when she came asking, we all denied. And she said that that money was her last card. You know, if teachers keep last card, you don't touch it. Go and ask teachers, they will explain to you. Because they, they live by salary. She complained and cried to school over. Who took very small money? Nobody agreed. And out of pain, she said, Whoever took this money will fill us up. Your children will fill us up. Your grandchildren will fill us up. <laughs> I 
it sounded funny. The children all laughed and left. Herself, she never had work. She never passed. But she had forgotten that. Her children, it's their turn. And if that yoke was not broken, her grandchildren will never pass exam. I, I don't know what I'm communicating here. That family academically was bent over. But in case you are laboring under that kind of experience, today, fire will consume that situation. And you shall be set free. Hear this, brethren. I said, go and look for that teacher. But she was dead. She searched. The woman had died. She came and said, only by mercy of the Lord Jesus will you be set free. And we pleaded for mercy. And the Lord showed mercy. And I laid hands on those two children and prayed. Two of them are in the third year in the university. They had the brain. But the problem was <laughs> maybe when they finish writing Wayek, the person that will mark their own will be somebody whose husband got angry with and they quarreled that money. And the person came and did the <laughs> zingo on their paper. <laughs> you know, the devil is a bastard. He can manipulate so many things. business you are bent over because others may do that business it will work once you put your hand it will close it's a bent over situation it's a bent over situation how come somebody came with first class and couldn't get a job but somebody with pass got a job the same job you applied for what is it that bent you over be on your feet, ask three persons, what is it that bent you over? What is it that bent you over? That could allow you straighten up and move forward as should. What is it? Take your seat. Can you take one minute, think about the different bent over situations you've been experiencing. The different bent over circumstances in your health, on your children, on your wife, on the environment where you live. On the life of people around you. Bent over. There are some things that keep repeating themselves. Oh, I decree. Every wrong thing that has been repeating, you, repeating itself in the families you came from will not repeat itself in your personal life. Okay, let me speak to only 22 of you. 22 persons. Father, I decree. Whatever that is wrong, that is negative, that have been repeating in families. Lord, because we are in your presence this morning, and you are here as the Prince of Peace, and you are here as God's rest, Lord Jesus, let those matter not repeat in our own lives, not repeat in our own situations. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I enter the family, sit down, I'm almost done. I'm, I'm going to start by 11. I enter the family where it is a family tradition, somebody must get mad. Family, in fact, to worsen the matter, one of them, this, they are living in the United States. The son was studying medicine. Towards graduation, the boy left school, came back home, and told the parents, I don't want to be a doctor. Left America, came back to Nigeria, and as I'm talking to you now, he is doing nothing you don't understand what I'm saying papa and mama live in America all siblings in America he came back and said I'm not I don't want to be a doctor again what do you want to do nothing in fact now actually what is doing the village now is and this is not the first time it is happening is that happened to one of their sons who made first class in physics that one is just there doing farming they employed him in an oil company sent him abroad for training in switzerland he got to switzerland spent a year came back to nigeria don't want to go back to potakot again to work he's in the village now um, 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 Akubo. the other of the cousin is you not know that he's very intelligent very fine young man graduated but at a point, he started smoking in Jahim. Now, he is neither mad nor normal. I don't know what I understand. He's either, he's neither mad nor normal. Bent over situation. 
In fact, when one of their cousins was telling me the story, she said to me, please, I don't want my elder brother to be like, he's our only son, to be like all of our cousins like that. Because he's repeating in everybody's family. And people are saying, you know, that's how God wanted to be. Are you, are you really sure about that? That's, that's how God wanted to be. Everybody the same situation. No, Somebody say, mba, mba, it's not the will of God. It's not God's will. When I'm talking this morning, begin to think. There are certain situations that, as a child of God, you get confused about it. I mean, I'm a child of God. My case should be different. What is this? I said, go and call your brother. In my very presence, a young man almost graduating from the university in engineering. In my very, demons are very wicked. They knew he was about to be delivered. In my very presence, the boy came back from campus. As we sat down to talk, as he was talking to me, the guy became mental in my presence. You don't understand what I'm saying. Just, what a crisis school, one year, what year, I know, bank, from here, bank, I know, I stopped talking and entered prayers. <laughs> For that demon to leave, it was like it was like wrestling match in my office for that evil spirit to leave that boy which means they were just waiting for that one to graduate maybe his own was sat in youth service be on your feet everybody shout with anger whatever bent our family over let it be broken let it be broken let it be broken turn it to prayer somebody wherever you are make sure you're praying don't joke about this matter too many people are bent over too many families are bent over by the powers of demons they couldn't straighten up i want more to an ogre i will be more to an ogre or more we can pay rack you can't just keep quiet say don't worry even if i never be busy if you don't pray satan will mess your family he will mess your life what is it that bent you over some in the Bible, her own was 18 years. 18 good years. That woman was bent over. Wasn't she a Jew? She was a Jewess. Wasn't she praying? She was praying. But she needed an encounter in her life. In Jesus' name we prayed. Listen, in Jesus' name we prayed. If you say amen, you are going home with your miracle. Now, I want to get you into a prayer because I'm going to pray for eight minutes or nine before I close you. Listen to this. Must everybody stop at the same level in your family? Am I communicating here? I told you about a woman that came to my office. I said, Daddy, I have six children. Six. Four. No, five. Are all in America very rich. One is working the oil company in Portacot. Very comfortable. But six of them have forgotten me. No, I said, she said they forgot. They have forgotten me. I said, no, ma'am. Ma, it's not possible. How can six forget you? She said, my husband's wife, my husband's, my husband's, my husband's, my husband's brother's wife said to me one day, say you don't have them, but you won't enjoy them. I will enjoy them on your behalf. She said, I don't know what she did to my children. My children will come back home and go to her house and stay. And give her something to come and give me. I said, Ma, are you sure what you're saying? She said to me, my house, the roofs are leaking. I can barely take myself to the hospital. But my children are multimillionaires and reaching another woman. Let me say this to you. That is a terrible bent over situation. On our way, he had been the And I said, Mama, we shall go for 21 days. That yoke must be broken. We began to fast and pray and plead with God, and the Lord intervened. After that prayer, the one in Portacot, one day, they, do you know what they tell their wives? Mama is dead. That their mama has died. The devil, may God punish the devil. 
Kwe so pastor. Ndi igbo si onye chukwa ya megini nyariye. Ma wanya chukwa sa mo mo mori. Do you know her husband died when the eldest, eldest child was only about 12 or 13 years? She labored to train all of them in the university. Uraka, muraka. There was nothing she didn't do. And somebody else is enjoying it. And she's roaming about crying. She Do you And the Lord intervened. The one in Portacot, the wife of the one in Portacot said, did you say, one, just one afternoon, one Sunday afternoon, did you say mama is dead? I said, well, I said but somebody called on phone. I, I told her to call them. Somebody called on phone and said she was mama. Immediately that woman said that the spell on the young man left. The man said, mama, yes, mama. Mama, you know. He took the phone, called that number. Mama picked. The boy carried himself through on the ground, entered vehicle with the wife, left Patakot down to Anambra here. They were crying and rolling on the floor. For seven years, nobody asked her. Mama was weeping. That one was weeping. That one now took phone and called America. Called their eldest brother. No my God. That was it. Immediately he called that one. The spell left. That's how the spell left all of them. They all came back to Nigeria. When the woman was, when the woman came to see me again, I didn't know her. She looked like Oyibo. They, they all came back to Nigeria. They were in contest who will take her first. <laughs> uh, let me announce to you that limitation that bent you over. That thing has, that's, no, the devil is a bastard. Though. Lift your right hand in anger. Say, in the name of Jesus. Whatever I have labored for, I must enjoy it in my lifetime. Whatever bent me over, you forces of limitation, break by fire. Turn it to prayer, somebody here. Rising and falling is not the will of God. Rising and falling is not the will of God. Say no, no, no. The price for freedom has been paid by Jesus. I refuse to be bent over. That devil is a liar. I don't care how many years. I refuse to bend over. I refuse to be bent over. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Say amen again if you understand what you're saying in prayer. Hear this, we're almost done. Hear this. The woman was bent over for 18 years. Friends, 18 years is a long time. Put your hand like this. Somebody shout with anger. Any situation that have lasted a long time in my life sponsored by satan in the name of jesus let that yoke be broken let that yoke be broken let that yoke be broken turn it to prayer somebody now go ahead and pray we are done any matter in my life that have lasted too long but it was sponsored by demons let that case end. Let that matter end. Let it end. Let it end. Let it end. Be Kim Bradush Zula Lebele Melaka Dabada Hush. In Jesus' precious name, we prayed. The Bible said she was bent over and she could not straighten up she couldn't straighten up i want to close with this the season for bending over is over the time from straightening up has come somebody speak like this my health straightening up my finances 
in the name of Jesus stretching up my my favor my contacts my children now in the name of Jesus stretching up open your mouth and talk that way for a minute or two as we round off with it everything about my life stretching up according to the word of God my health my health my health my health my health stretching up I refuse to stay sick for the rest of my life I refuse to stay sick for the rest of my life my health stretching up my finance my finance stretching up no more stagnation no more confusion my finance stretching up stretching up stretching up in the name of Jesus stretching up my ministry stretching up my marital life stretching up stretching up my spiritual life my prayer life stretching up no more dryness no more emptiness no more depression I refuse to commit suicide I stretching up in Jesus precious name we pray before we leave this place this morning I want you to clap your hands and pray this prayer somebody say no more attacks shout with anger the attack is over clap your hand and say the attack is over now speak this way as I clap my hands today I am released from every attack every bondage I am released released clap your hands and make a decree from every attack every yoke every bondage I am released 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 I'm released in the morning I'm released in the afternoon I'm released in the night my children are released my husband is released my wife is released my destiny is released. My grandchildren, they are released. As I clap my hands, in the name of Jesus, I decree freedom, 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 spiritual freedom, physical freedom, marital freedom, financial freedom, social freedom, freedom! 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 Freedom in the morning, freedom in the afternoon, freedom in the night. Biki Mali, Boshi Yagadabo, Ekoshi Katime, Okitabalagadabanagosh. Freedom! In Jesus' powerful name, we pray. I speak to 30 of you. That veil that covered your life from shining, the veil catches fire now. The veil catches fire now. That thing that stops you from stepping into the plan of God. That thing that hinders you from arriving at the will of God. Is broken now. Is broken now. Is broken now. Is broken now. If you want to say amen, say the most dangerous amen wherever you are. Now open your eyes, look at me. The worst thing that can happen to any man is sin when sin bend you over you're finished sin is a killer sin is a sinker sin is a binder sin is a grinder sin is a destroyer when you allow sin in your life you are bent over sin bends people over why the bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god sin shortens your ability to receive from god Sin shortens your relationship with God. Sin shortens the favor you receive. Sin is a killer. Sin is death. Sin can destroy. Sin, when it bends you over. But I came to announce to you, there is an antidote for sin. The antidote for sin is in the blood of Jesus. The antidote for sin is in the name of Jesus. Now finally lift your two hands. Begin to call upon the blood of Jesus over your family, over your life. Let your life be cleansed and washed and purified and sanctified. Somebody open your mouth and say the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. While we're praying that prayer, Ezekiel family, if you're ready, you can come to the altar for prayer right now. 
the Ezekiel family, if you're here, you can come to the altar for prayer right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Amen. Just put your hand this way, everybody. Put your hand this way. Say, as I put my hand on myself, I'm healed. 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 Every pain in my body, every disease in my body, go. Go now. Disappear from my body. You spirit of infirmity, you are not allowed in my body. Vanish. Now. Disappear. Now. Vacate. Now. Any pain in my body, the price has been paid. Get out! And don't come back again. In the name of Jesus Christ. By his stripes, I am healed. I am well. I am set free. No more bondage. No more manipulation. I am set free. By the power of Jesus. I am well. By the power of Jesus. Wave your hands and thank him. If you believe. If you believe you've straightened up. Thank him. Oh my God. If you believe that. This 18 years bondage or 20 something or 30 years bondage is broken. Appreciate the Lord. Give him glory. Thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' powerful name, we pray. Just take your seats for a few minutes and we're out of here. Anybody watching us online? David, in the name of Jesus, straightening up. Watching from USA. Who else is watching? When you hear from Oweri, in the name of Jesus, stretching up. I pray for you, watching from Lagos. When you hear stretching up, in Jesus' name. Whatever held you down is broken. Jump out from Potakot, stretching up, in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody else viewing us from Abuja, Neka, stretching up, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, uh, Patrolina from Lagos, stretching up, in Jesus' name. Somebody else is watching from Boston. No, so stretching up in Jesus' name. Somebody else is watching us from Lagos. Stretching up in Jesus' name. Another one is watching from Oweri, from uh, uh, Alozier. Stretching up in Jesus' name. Whatever kept you bound is broken. Each of from United Kingdom. Stretching up in Jesus' name. Any about anybody that will view us life after now, wherever you are in the world, the bondage in your life is broken. He's broken. He's broken. He's broken. Shutting up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With your hands and thank him again. With your hands and bless his name again. We worship the King of Glory. Worship the ancient of days. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. All believers will say, Amen. There's one good thing I wanted to do for me.